Hey there guys, gals, and non-binary Myco pals. Myco Chaotix here, and I hope you enjoyed that new opening number. I must admit, I made the audio with my own voice and put together my grandpa slideshow with pride. I hope you all enjoy this video. Uh, I'm making this a two-part video where the first will be the spawn to bulk substrate process shown as I normally do it. Uh, in one variation that's generally my preferred six quart shoebox tub method. Um, I use various modifications to tubs. It kind of just depends on my mood um, and like available tubs and just kind of experimentation in general. Currently I'm using unmodded tubs and they work really good. Um, it's surprising to me how persistent and vicarious the mycelium can be um, when it's colonizing and just the various substrates that it can colonize and the various nutrients that it can colonize. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of variance in uh, mycelium, mycelium, um, especially between different species when you go to gourmets and you go into like things like mycorrhizal fungi and it's just a lot of really awesome stuff that's definitely for a different video but worth discussing so for this tub i'm actually going to be using just the standard cvg core vermiculite gypsum substrate and casing layer uh people have success with just core uh, but that's fine you know i've no, no no judgment like do whatever you want and whatever gives you success um i personally enjoy just adding in some of the nutrients i mean gypsum is a very interesting nutrient that is uh, calcium sulfate and it's basically a mineral like powder that contains calcium and sulfur and uh one of the main functions of it is to like provide calcium obviously which can, is a, can be a nutrient that is essential for m many funguses growth um calcium I believe is important for the development of like cell walls and fungus um, but I'd have to research that some more. Gypsum can also aid in loosening the texture of the substrate which can allow for some different types of aeration and water retention uh, which are very crucial for mycelial growth and fruiting and pinning. You'll notice here in the video that I'm just 70% um, isopropyl spraying my hands and kind of preparing to begin the spawn to bulk process. Um, I'm using a single uh, quart jar of spawn that's just whole oats um, that I pressure cooked for an hour and a half at 15, maybe 16 PSI using about a 10 minute uh, venting time just to um, equalize the pressure in the pressure cooker. And the uh, inoculated uh, fungus in this video is the uh, albino penis envy um, strain of the psilocybe cubensis. Um, this specific isolate is one that I've kind of pulled out over the last year. Um, the original genetics came from PGT, which if you guys haven't seen PGT, you're doing something wrong. His content is wonderful. And, um, I essentially used what, uh, genetics I got there and, um, you know, did a couple of initial flushes through the, the regular process and, uh, swabbed those fruits and then took those swabs to agar and you know did the process of pulling different um, uh, colonies that would uh, germinate on the plate and running those out and then testing them in tubs and just kind of seeing which one produced the fruits I wanted and so this isolate is kind of like I, I call them big boy apes um, you'll see in part two definitely worth checking out and so at this time, I've filled up the six quart shoe box with my CVG that has been previously uh, heat steamed or heat pasteurized in a um, like a water cooler um, because it comes as a compressed block and you put it in and you put in the gypsum and the vermiculite or whatever nutrients you're doing. I generally have a 500 gram block and then I do uh, 500 grams of vermiculite and 100 grams of gypsum. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I basically add in a quarter, quart and a half of the substrate and then, uh, break up with a butter knife, the spawn jar and mix that in. And then you're going to see that I basically will start to separate the mycelial chunks that I missed with the, uh, butter knife. The butter knife will do a little bit of bruising, obviously, cause you're kind of have to do a little bit of hacking and sawing, but it's not that terrible. And the mycelium really recovers pretty quickly in my experience. Um, assuming that you've selected for healthy growing mycelium and not just like a random spore syringe and all in one bag. 
Um, but if you were doing that, you wouldn't be watching this video because this is kind of like a different process than using an all-in-one bag. Um, and my preferred process, I have a whole, I'll go into a whole video about why I don't like all in one bags, but that's, you know, no judgment if you use them, but y you can move from them once you've had a successful flush or two or whatever, and, and have a lot more interesting experiences in my opinion, um, and more, um, substantial and, and varied flushes. I'll say when I'm going through the grain, like I'm doing now and separating, I'm, I'm not only am I trying to separate clumps out, but I'm also kind of visually examining the grains, knowing that the mycelium will bruise once you start to handle it and separate it. And so, you know, you have to kind of do it a couple of times with different strains that you work with to kind of see what that looks like. But it's generally kind of the same, like a blue or kind of like a darker, um, sometimes green, but not always. And I hesitate to say green because you know, often green is attached to trichoderma um, and to penicillium, which are both problematic, uh, common fungal contaminants and that I did not get in this tub, um, as you will see in part two, where I harvest this tub um, after I think it took about maybe 14 days or so to colonize and then fruit, um, maybe maybe a little more. Um, but so yeah, now I'm just incorporating the spawn and the substrate and I'm trying to do it in something that I would call homogeneously. You wanna make sure that your grains are separated and there's enough substrate in between them so that they are able to essentially radiate uh, their mycelial hyphae outwards from the grain and kind of just start to interconnect and consume the nutrients in the substrate and colonize it. Um, once the grains, uh, the different, the, the individual hyphae from the, each grain kind of touch, they reconnect and they go back into being kind of like that single um, uh, multicellular fungal organism that is this jar of spawn um, that is a specific isolate. And the, and, and the fruit, the mushrooms, are the end stage of the reproduction of that fungus. And um, so essentially in these tubs if you if you're watching this and have never done anything like this before in these tubs you are trying to emulate in my opinion emulate or stimulate the environment that would occur outside obviously you're providing a very unique environment for the fungus to grow and thrive and then to fruit um, where you are reducing contaminants that would naturally occur in the wild you are increasing nutrient availability in ways that are not available in the wild um, and so um, you, that's how you get these big flushes that you would never see in the wild necessarily, um, unless you're lucky. Um, but so, um, as you can see, I have uh, mixed the spawn and the sub, and uh, once it was homogeneously incorporated, I compacted it. I generally do pretty firm compaction, um, and, and you can just kind of watch this video again, or, or if you've been watching as I've been talking, um, narrating, I guess. Um, I firmly compact that first layer um, and then this casing layer, which is also just CVG. Um, I do compaction, especially firm edging, but the actual like surface compaction is kind of a lighter, you know, you want it loosely compacted, but you still want the surface to be flat um, just for like evenness in the hyphae that erupt from the surface during the last phases of colonization, assuming everything goes well. And you want to make sure your field capacity is always on point when you're making your own substrate. Look that up. If you don't know what it is, hit, hit me up in the comments. I can explain it. Um, but so basically, if your field capacity is correct, then you don't have to open this tub again until it's uh, the surface is like 90% to 100% fully visibly colonized. Um, and if you noticed or maybe didn't notice, I don't use... Um, uh, liners in my tub um, I have a whole spiel about that maybe I can do a video about that uh, and you notice that I just am using a hair uh, salon mister that has uh, uh, sterile water in it or, or filtered water that I do like just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in maybe less than like um, like a teaspoon just like a teaspoon worth Um, and I just, I, I miss the edges of the tub and the lid and the surface of the substrate um, to just kind of promote humidity throughout the process. All right, well, I appreciate y'all watching. Please like and follow and subscribe. Um, feel free to leave comments and um, I look forward to making part two of this video. 
Michael Chaotix signing off.